It is 3.56, and of course tonight, uh, Twilight Live music series in downtown Kingsport uh, featuring uh, our friend Jeff Atchison. What's up, Jeff? Hey, John. Good How to you see doing? you. Good to, it's, it's been a while. What, five days or something? Oh, something like that, yeah. Since we, we all got together down in Asheville. Yeah, exactly. It was enormous fun. We headed back south, and <laughs> so we've, we've still been around, uh, driving around a bit since then, but just rolled in. Uh, to uh, WQUT right now, and good to see you, mate. Well, we, uh, we certainly hope the weather cooperates. And a little background, a couple of years ago, you know, like two years ago on my birthday, my friend Mike over my shoulder here was like, well, you know, it's it's your birthday, let's go out and do something. What are we going to do? And I was like, eh, it's Wednesday night, so I don't know. Yeah, we got to go out. So find out uh, this Australian guy's playing guitar down at uh, the bus pit, so let's go do that. And, of course, we just sat there. Uh, with our jaws on the table for the next couple of hours watching the shows. Uh, I've been a fan ever since, and uh, I right. guess this is the fourth or whatever time we've, we've seen you play. And, yeah, uh, but that, this will only be our second time to Kingsport, I think, though. Yeah, absolutely. So we're pretty excited about the show tonight. Yeah, uh, obviously, you're not from around here. You're okay. from Melbourne, Australia. Way down south. And yeah. make, a, make it over a couple of times a year? Yeah, usually a couple of times a year, um, and, and for a few weeks at a time. Uh, so there's a this, this has been a June tour. I, I, I actually head back home next week, but I'll come back over in September. I have, uh, have a few things going on there. You've been, uh, you've had a, a, a different, you're kind of an, an orthodox uh, guitar player. So you're sort of somewhat self-taught, aren't you? You started out, uh, yeah. so tell us how that all got started. Uh, yeah, well, I, I grew up in a, a small town in, in uh, Australia, and there, there weren't many guitar players around. There, there certainly weren't uh, any other uh, blues music fans around where I grew up, uh, but there, there was a, a guy who played a bit of guitar and my dad sent me off for a dollar a lesson, and I, I think I had half a dozen lessons from this guy. Uh, who, he basically showed me how to tune it up and how to how to form chords and what the notes were, and, and I uh, You're on your own after that. that. I was on my own after that, yeah. Well, the, the thing we were most, uh, you know, kind of shocked by when we saw you the first time, because you get so many great sounds out of your guitars, <laughs> Mike was like, he's not plugged in, he has no effects, he's got no pedals plugged pedals, in anything, yeah. you're doing all this stuff, and you, it was kind of funny how you uh, you came by that uh, that uh, part of your repertoire as well. <laughs> well I, was, I was born out of ignorance, really, <laughs> so, listening to... A happy like, accident. Uh, yeah, yeah, perhaps, but, uh, but uh, you know, but, Early on, when I, w I was gathering as much music as I could, and I used to tune into it. There was a there was a, a small radio station near us that I could tune into every Thursday night. There was a, a guy; he still runs the show. I, 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 a fellow called Doctor Jules. It was uh, what was the show called? Track of the Blues with Doctor Jules, and he'd, he'd play all these great old blues and soul music from uh, yeah, you know, uh, latest releases as well as kind of delving back into the vaults and. Uh, and that exposed me to all kinds of players. But he 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 played Jimi Hendrix and sort of early Fleetwood Mac and stuff like that. And and listening to those records, so now and again, especially with players like Hendrix or Jeff Beck, you know, guys like that, you know, using using wah wah pedals and phasing devices and flanges and all this sort of weird stuff. I I had no idea that I I thought these guys were just coaxing this this stuff out of the guitar, and, and so I did my best to to emulate it. Uh, and of course, I, but you know, later on, I found out about the yeah, the, the and, gadgets. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was a duh, <laughs> kind of one of those. Moments. Probably saved you a lot of money over the years. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, tell, I, I, I bought a few. I, I tried them out. I've, I've, there's a dusty old wah wah pedal in my closet back home somewhere. But I just felt I was having a lot more fun, you know, sort of trying to manipulate the guitar to do what I wanted. So I, I've kind of continued on that path. Of course, uh, leads to some uh, other accidents. You, you broke your. Uh, I saw the pictures of you breaking your uh, Paul Reed oh, yeah, Smith Paul last year. Uh, <laughs> bending. <laughs> <laughs> I've just discovered the joys of the uh, the uh, whammy bar. Yeah. The, the trem kit. Uh, so, I was a Gibson player for the longest time, and they, and that you know they they're not equipped with uh, with that 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 device. The the big long yeah. the arm that comes out of the bridge and can make you do these these with it. But I used to bend the neck of the guitar, and I'd seen. Uh, I'd seen players do that at some. Tommy Emmanuel used to do that with his mm -hmm. Telecaster, and uh, so I adopted that habit. And I could get the sounds I wanted, and that was fine. But this, this, uh, you know, this Paul Reed Smith guitar I've got. I've been playing for the last ten years. And Give it up finally. Yeah, a couple of months ago, I was second song into the set, and I don't carry a spare guitar, but I just 
went for a bend. I was, I was rocking out, and I, I pulled the neck right off the right off the axe. I, I mean, the crowd went wild. And we, we had a full house next week, too. People weren't wanting to see me do it again. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, like the Pete Townsend or something, yeah. smashing it. Uh, we did the uh, midnight snack last night. Played one ticket, one ride, and. Um, you know, it's uh, a wonderful album, but it's heavily produced. It's it's kind of nothing like what uh, you folks will see tonight. It's a it's a stripped down, oh, three piece, it, dirty, gritty, oh, yeah. stanky. Well, you did laundry, you said yesterday, it's so it probably won't be. It probably <laughs> Maybe won't not be so stanky. stanky. <laughs> but, uh, but we uh, yeah, we've got we've got the, the 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 trio tonight, which is how we usually roll when we're on the road over here. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the setup's like. I like to play a couple of acoustic tunes usually to to open up the set. Um, but, uh, but I've got the great Ted Peckio on bass, who played on that album, and uh, Greg Babbers playing drums, who was a guy who was a fan of his for a long time before uh, I got to know him uh, when I was living over here for a bit. So, uh, yeah, we're travelling around in the van at the moment, and, and that's, the, that's are, the show. They are the Soul Diggers, and uh, soul you've got a beautiful acoustic guitar, brand, your brand new yeah. wooden friend here, so uh, yeah. uh, that's a, it's as good a time as any. What, uh, what are you going to play for us? Uh, I don't I never use a set list, so I, I don't really know <laughs> until the moment comes. But If we could coax whipping Post out of you at some point, that would there be great. That's, that's all the encouragement I need, John. Jeff Atchison <laughs> and the Soul Diggers. It's a free show tonight at uh, Twilight Alive Broad Street in downtown Kingsport. And is a take on the Allman Brothers Whippin' Post.
Yeah, 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 yeah. 